and ask for the check. And after trip in time, yeah, you ask for the check uh, every half an hour. But this is the real life. No, it's his, the, the quality's not too great at his end. I don't know if there's anything he can do at his end. Yeah, that's the maximum. It's like, uh, you remember the Charlie's Angels. They used to talk with him uh, only with the microphone. Yes, he did. Okay. Just for a second. That's good. And uh, what do you want to ask the Some questions for the floor for Ravna, perhaps? Rob. Questions to be a to be a, an expert, to be the uh, the expert for Mossad answering questions. Has there ever been something that you knew was incorrect in the movie, but you actually couldn't correct because that fact was itself still classified? Okay, so if you talk about Hollywood movie. Uh, for example, in Operation Finale, the doctor that was man, he became a beautiful blonde woman. <laughs> that would be uh, hard to do in real life, even with a massage. There is a lot, there is a lot of uh, things that are not uh, accurate to the real operation, but you need to sell seats eh? and you need to sell tickets. Now, uh, I think that. Uh, in the spy movie, uh, James Bond, he got the resume end. So we cannot change his life. And my dream is to make a, a James Bond movie that relates to the Mossad and uh, not only the, the, the movie that they made or the book that they wrote on 62, they just mentioned the Captain Mark one. And I think that the Mossad is. Uh, is a big name in the world. You know, when I'm coming to lecture, I don't, I don't need to even to talk. You just come as a former Mossad agent, and it's a big success. <laughs> and I hope to come next time and meet you all and uh, talk about uh, different movies and uh, to compare it to the real life. What, what? I just mentioned that uh, I just mentioned to you that me and Abdel together we are uh, lecturing and researching together the difference, as Abdel knows and I from the film between uh, films and fiction, between the reality of the espionage world and what's seen in movies, Israeli, foreign, etc., and especially the bomb film. What would Avner, apart from Operation Finale, what would Avner recommend as his most accurate fictional portrayal on the screen? If you were to ask Avner, what, what gets it right? What's he seen that, that does it best? You were asked, what? Did which, you hear? Which yeah. movie that you see, that you saw, seems to be the most accurate one according to your knowledge of the espionage world? My next movie. <laughs> and apart from that, come on. Let's, let's, let's get us I, 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 I must, I must say, to, I must say to Martin. You know, he got uh, two little kids that go to the kindergarten every day. I told him, you don't look like a doctor in the university. You're too young. Because we think that the doctor in the university is all. He is very serious. And you know, Martin, you can be spy, it's not polite. <laughs> um, what do you think about Spielberg's movie Munich? Yes. Uh, how accurate is this? Were you involved in advising that? Or uh, what do you think of, of the portrayal of the story of Munich? Uh, thank, you for the, thank you for the question. I can tell you that the one that wrote the story from Munich wasn't one day in the club. <laughs> he said that he was the head of the cancer, head of Kidon, the special unit. He wasn't even one day in the Mossad. This is my answer. <laughs> you 
know how many, how many players uh, say that they served in Mossad? <laughs> that, that's the advantage of it being so secret, right? <laughs> you, you can't prove them wrong. <laughs> no, but, but in my case, in my case, I was the one that built the first uh, spy museum for the Mossad inside the headquarters, and I became famous because of this. That's the only reason that I am here today to talk to you about my life and about the espionage life, real life. Is there an exhibit in the museum you could tell us about, Abner? Is there any, what's, what's the most special exhibit that you're allowed to tell us about? Well, if I, if I tell you, I have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> We, we have, uh, for example, I believe regional objects. Regional object is, means that if you have the gun, the same gun that they use in, uh, in this operation, or if you have that car that they use for, this, for the other operation, it's also, that's why the export uh, exhibition in London uh, is very successful. I believe that uh, if you use a written stuff, it's very important. Now, for example, if you if you know about the Ethiopian Jews that he brought from Africa, I have a passport that we use to bring 300 people to the one passport. We used to take eight kids, one one man and one woman and make a Polaroid for it, a picture of all of them as a family. And we smuggled them to Europe with one passport. And then we used to send the passport to Sudan, replace the date, and make another 10 people. So 300 people came in one passport. And I have all the small pictures and I have passports. And you know what? Usually when when you write the names of kids in your passport, you need a special pen. Now the Mossad didn't have the pen that the Sudan and you. So they sent agent with 200 archers for Mossad and we gave them a gift to the all, of, all the building got our pen. They start to use the Mossad pens for the past. <laughs> so we chose what you have to in the opposite way, you have to, to be very creative. And I can tell you, for example, we talk about Sudan, the Mossad built a hotel, a dive center. All the staff in the hotel were Mossad agents, but they didn't have any guests from Europe. So they sent 100 retired Mossad agents that came from Europe to Sudan, so 